All right, let's buckle in. We are now going to draw a bond diagram. So I'm going to walk you through my rules for drawing bond diagrams. And what those, there are actually going to be five rules. Um, we're only going to, in this video, we're only going to go over the first four. Um, and to do that, we need an example. So a great example for us to talk about is H to the ozzle, good old dihydrogen monoxide. Uh, if you name this using the prefix name, right, the di goes with hydrogen, dihydrogen monoxide, dihydrogen monoxide, kid you not. So rules for drawing bond diagrams. Number one, we have to count or sum or uh, do some basic arithmetic valence electrons. So what we're going to do with this problem right here is we're going to look at it and we're going to see if we can identify how many valence electrons are in dihydrogen monoxide. Water, right? Better name for it is water. So we see hydrogen is in group one. So that means it has one valence electron. Oxygen is in group 16. So that means it has 16 valence electrons. No, it doesn't, right? Yeah, no. Uh, oxygen only has eight electrons. How could it have 16 valence electrons? That makes no sense. Remember, for the P block, you take the group number minus 10. So oxygen actually has six valence electrons. So uh, we're going to take, I'm going to jump back over here. We're going to have hydrogen has one, but there are two hydrogens. That's subscript to two on there. So we're going to multiply that times two to give me how many valence electrons from hydrogen. Then we're going to add the valence electrons from oxygens, there were six for oxygen, which gives me eight total valence electrons I got worried about. All right, so the second step is we need to identify the central atom. We need to identify the central atom. So how do you identify the central atom? There are sort of two rules here. Um, I call subpart A the no-duh rule. Uh, your central atom is going to be the element there are the fewest so we're going to look um, I call it the no-duh rule because if you had to pick out of here oxygen versus hydrogen well there's two hydrogens but there's only one oxygen so if you had to pick something to be the center you're probably going to guess it's going to be the element we only have one of, and that would be oxygen. So in our case, by the no-duh rule, oxygen is going to be our central element. We're going to start by drawing it. Um, the subrule B is one that makes a little less sense, but uh, when we get into some further problems, it'll make a little more sense. Um, you pick the element closest to the center, not of the formula, but of the periodic table of the elements, or p-tote for short. So it actually does make sense here. The center of the table is somewhere right in this region, somewhere right around where my cursor is right now. Oxygen is slightly closer to that than hydrogen is. So believe it or not, oxygen is a central atom by both of these rules. What happens when they conflict? A always takes precedent. If you only got one of that atom and you've got multiples of the other atom, that's definitely your central atom. Number three, rule number three, now that we've got our central atom, we're going to put the surrounding atoms and we are going to bond them to our central atom. So what is our surrounding atoms? Well, there are two hydrogens in this thing. So we're going to put two hydrogens on here, and we're going to draw bonds from them to oxygen. So each bond, can't forget, is four, doggone it, each bond is two electrons, but we have two of them. That's where that number four is coming from right there. There's a bond here and a bond here. So I've already drawn four electrons in this thing. So anytime you draw electrons, you're going to want to take them out of the pot. So we had eight to start with. We've now added four electrons to it. So eight minus four leaves me with only four electrons left to draw. So where the heck do those four electrons go to? Well, that's step four. 
draw dots starting with your central to give a full octet. This is called the octet rule. It's the idea that every atom in a diagram wants to have eight electrons. <clears throat> so we go up here and we look at our central atom, we look at oxygen. Now the way that I show, uh, that I, the way that I see how many electrons oxygen has around it is what I do is I'm gonna take a little post-it note. Now usually I'm doing this in person, right? And I'm doing this on paper and I can just draw on, I can just put my hand on the paper. I'm gonna put my hand up there, I'm gonna cover up the H. And then I'm going to put my hand up there, and I'm going to cover up this other H right here. And the idea is, now we're going to look around the oxygen. So the only element I see here is oxygen. We're going to look around it. We're going to see how many electrons it currently has around it. And it has a bond on the left and a bond on the right. So each one of those is two electrons. It has four electrons around it. So it needs eight, right? you got to have a full octet. So what do we need to do? We need to add four more electrons on here. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to add dots to it. And those dots go somewhere else. They don't go on the same sides. Remember, you can only have two dots on each side. right? This is related to those Lewis diagrams that we talked about before. Two dots to each side, just like this. And there's our last four electrons right there. We added those four dots. Each one is an electron. Check. No problem. Now I can get rid of this, and I can look and make sure that my hydrogen has a full octet. So I'm going to cover this. Oh, no. When I cover up the other elements, we look at hydrogen. It's only got two dots around it. Well, fudge. I don't have any more electrons to pull from. I'm, I'm down to zero. I marked off my four electrons. I don't have any more electrons to add to this. So what do I do now? Well, now I panic. No, no, no. There are exceptions to the octet rule. That's why I really don't like calling it the octet rule. It's really just a step, the octet step. Um, hydrogen and lithium, believe it or not, if you ever see lithium in one of these, they only want two electrons. Beryllium stops at four electrons. Boron stops at six electrons. And if you got ones that can have less than eight, believe it or not, you can also have ones that have more than eight. So uh, sulfur, phosphorus, chlorine, bromine, um, selenium, and believe it or not, iodine can all have more than eight. They can have more than eight. Doesn't mean every time they're gonna have more than eight, but they are allowed to have more than eight. So sometimes if you have extra dots, you'll wind up putting them on one of these central atoms. We're going to practice this a whole bunch. Tomorrow, we're going to come back and we're going to look at number five. There is a fifth rule here, and we're going to get into that one when we need to. Um, right now, what you should be able to do is go work on these circled problems on the worksheet that's posted for today.